Juicy details on how you can complete a project like this. It doesn't matter what you're working on because you can take the foundational body work application steps and apply it to any job that you're working on. All right, so for instance, we're gonna cover the safety, the tools that you're gonna be needing. We're gonna cover sandpaper, grits, DA, some of the basic tools. Um, we're gonna put a two-tone paint job on this thing. Okay, so all you gotta do right now to make sure you don't miss out on this special training is click right over here uh, or down below on the YouTube description and you're gonna be going to a website called learnautobodyandpaint.com forward slash good van because it's a good van project okay forward slash good van subscribe okay, so the first thing you want to do when starting any project is to make sure that the project is clean okay so i highly recommend using a good car wash with no wax in it okay you don't want any type of additives in it you just want a regular degreasing car wash what's good is a little bit of dawn dish soap in a bucket not too much where it foams up like crazy but just a little uh, and that's a perfect degreasing wash to wash down your project to take out the oils and uh and just crap that's in the paint okay because it's just this is an old truck um it's a 1999 single stage paint job i believe it's it looks original to me um the respray looks original to me it was painted it was a uh, board of water supply vehicle company truck um, painted probably after they bought it new to match the company colors wash the rims we're gonna wash the tires wash everything hose it out after that we're gonna go around with a marker kind of just mark the areas where we need to do our body work let's go ahead bring it around the front and uh, and wash it down You don't want to use a car wash that says wash and wax, okay? Because what we want to do is remove the wax and silicone and grease, okay? Road grease, grime from the body. I'll take this Dura block out. Okay, so we have a couple of sanding blocks over here. Okay, we're gonna go over this stuff super quickly here. Um, of course, we have other tools like the straight sander. Okay, but we're not gonna be doing any large flat repairs using the straight sander. But uh, we cover all these other things and learn auto body VIP as well. If you decide to upgrade to the VIP course, it's all in there for you. Um, so first thing we're gonna do, little minor Dents, this is not even a dent, that's just a chip. Uh, because, what did I do? I did something and our door hit the fender. We Something happened. Forgot what it was, but I ended up pulling the fender out and it fixed it. Okay, so it's like, now it's not touching, if you see. Okay, we're gonna end up taking the mirrors off um, because the mirrors are gonna be painted black. Uh, as well as parts of the top here because we're going to black out the wind basically make it look like a wraparound window so in here is going to be taped off taped off we're going to go black or i might even go black the whole whole thing under the drip rail along with this post i might come down here and just black it all i don't know yet again we're just going to handle the body work um step by step first and then uh do it so these type of things here, we're gonna grind out. We're gonna see, looks like they filled it before with a glaze putty or a light body filler. Looks like it right there, okay? So we're gonna grind this little thing out, a little dent right here I just noticed, okay? We're gonna lightly grind that, okay? Light things, like these little, here, we got another little rust spot right here, okay? Uh, we're gonna just lightly grind that. Again, this is gonna be a, a fast paint job, but it's gonna look really, really good. Okay, this is a 1999 super old work van. If you look inside, things really beat up. Okay, it's it's really beat up. I got my machete. <laughs> All right, so I kind of like surf van, work van, 
whatever you want to call it. We're not going to do door gems at this point. Um, and then when doing color changes and door gems, uh, again, you could do it all in one shot if you want to. You know, as far as the paint process, you're going to make sure you have to take all your weather stripping out. When they painted it, enamel, they never did. You can see it. And I'm probably going to end up, um, I don't know if I might just paint over it. Because I'm definitely not going to spend my time cleaning this weather strip up. I don't have the patience for that. So it's up to you. If you have a situation like this, you could just wear this. This one, we're definitely going to spot weld. Pull that out for you. Show you how to pull a, pull out a dent. Flatten it out with, uh, probably could even use, yeah, we'll use a DA for this. We could use a straight sander, but uh, we'll use the DA for that. Shaping it. Pretty much it. We're going to be taking these lights out. This is going to be black. This whole black back piece here is going to be black. Okay, below is going to be white. I might do black bumpers. All right, so some of the basics that you need. You're going to need a set of body hammers. Okay, if you don't have a set, pick up a set. You don't need a, a, a large set. Um, literally, this hammer, this hammer, this hammer head. The handles might have been changed over time, but these are my dad's body work. These are probably 40 to 45 years old. No joke, these body hammers. My dad had them way back when, when he had his body shop doing uh, a lot of sheet metal and metal work. Shaped like that, good for doing sheet metal work on drip drip rails. If you gotta kinda bang something down in a drip rail, you know, you have different tips uh, on the hammers. This is good for just pounding on a flat surface. Okay. And we have all these videos in VIP as well. This is just off the top of my head showing you what I got uh, for this van project here. Okay, um, DAs. I have three of them, you don't need three. You just need one DA. Orbital sander, six inch disc, okay? Uh, we have an inner surface pad, we'll talk about this later. Sandpapers, blower, die grinder maybe if you're doing some metal work or cutting out, okay? This project, we're not gonna need it, but I'm just showing you some of the basics. A grinder, definitely gonna need a grinder, okay? We have 16 grit on this as a disc. Uni spot, this is an h and S probably 20 years old, um, had it for a very long time, still works well. Here are our little studs. Okay, this is basically, we grind, we weld, pull out with our pull hammer here. Some blocks, okay. Uh, this epoxy is good for body kits and bonding metal. We're not gonna be using this in this project, just showing you sometimes you're gonna need some uh, two-part epoxy. Okay, a spray gun, a decent spray gun. We use Atom spray guns. You could use whatever guns you want. You know, you can go cheapo, but, but I advise not to go super cheap because you get what you pay for. Use a good medium grade to me. The Atoms are great medium grade spray guns. Gun butt ultra lighting system for lighting. That we'll talk about later. Uh, we're using some long strand kitty hair for the top of the van because we do have a big hole that we need to fill. Eh, probably like that big, okay, we'll see. And then we got some body filler. We have some spreaders. Um, they're kind of dirty. I'll just sand them and clean them up. Okay, we have a metal spreader. If you want to use a metal spreader, we got those. This is good for doing large, you know, large body filler if you're doing a load of body filler. Uh, and then we got sandpaper grits. Okay, so the most common for shaping and doing overall body work is 60 grit. If you're going to be doing some large shaping, we're not using 60 on here. Uh, most of it is gonna be done with 80 grit as far as shaping. This is 120, I have 80 in the cabinet. Uh, 80, 120, 150, uh, 220, 360 is probably the papers that we're gonna be using here. We're gonna prime only the bodywork areas and we're gonna paint right over this enamel here, this old enamel. We're just gonna sand it down, get it nice, and paint right over it. Uh, the grill we're probably gonna repaint as well. Um, we'll just scuff it up and redo it black maybe. Uh, maybe we'll do like a Raptor liner on it. I'm not sure yet. Bumpers will probably be gloss, uh, single stage black. We just need a detail. Maybe this outer ring, I'll, I'll spray gloss black uh, to match the bumpers. You know, I think that'll look good. Other than that, this is pretty much the basics. I might be leaving a few things out um, as we're working. Um, if I come up with a few extra things, I'll be like, yo, this is, this is the other thing you're gonna need. Um, but basically, you know, you don't need much. You don't need much. Hand up oh, a rasp, okay, to shape some of your body filler. If you have a lot of body filler, we show you how to use a rasp. And then in our other VIP courses, we show you exactly, you know, step by step how to do uh, other projects as well. So if we're doing body kits, we have, you know, some fiberglass things in there that you might need and whatnot. 
Um, it, it, some, it depends on the project, okay? So if we're getting into glaze putty, you might need a little bit of dolphin glaze, okay? Here we got our paints and our products. Um, but that's pretty much it overall with the things that you need, okay? Um, honestly, if you didn't have the money or if you don't have a DA, you could do body work by hand. All of the body work can be done by hand. Good old elbow grease. Okay, so we're gonna get into each of these things in detail as we start doing the body work. Um, I'll be doing a voiceover or whatever if needed, but um, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna go around the car right now, um, probably just start sanding, okay? We're gonna sand down all this crap. You're gonna see, we're gonna uncover what's under here. The guy um, basically went to Home Depot, matched some Home Depot paint with this color and painted over, I think there was a, a logo here, a drip mark. This is a water van, uh, city and county water van. Today we're going to basically do all the dents, fill it with body filler and shape it. it. Should only take us a couple of hours, not too long. We'll just go around the car, grind, bop, 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 go all the way around and that's pretty much it. All right, thanks for watching. Keep watching. Talk to you soon. All right, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Now, uh, you can see that we grinded down this rust hole, okay? Now, just keep in mind, okay? Uh, the way you tackle a project, 
depends on your end goal. Now, if this is gonna be a sentimental project of yours, a build, you might wanna cut this out and spot weld a new piece of sheet metal in here, okay? And we show you how to do that in our other VIP courses at learnautobodyandpaint.com. But in this instance, this is a, an, an old work van, okay? Uh, we're just gonna patch it with fiberglass. So um, what, you, what I normally do if I'm gonna patch with sheet metal is you at least wanna kill the rust, okay? You could use a navel jelly. You look up any rust inhibitor navel jelly, you can find them on Amazon, eBay, uh, your local auto body supply store. It's like a little jelly. After you grind it like this, you just dab it on easy, and then you scuff it with 80 grit, and then you could do your, uh, your patching, your welding, or you could do your fiberglass, okay, or your body filler straight up if you're just gonna do a body filler job, okay? You, there's multiple ways to do it. Um, here you can see you have a very little, it's like a very little rust hole. So before doing any type of filling, you wanna make sure you tap it down so you're, you have a, a little area, a pocket, so to say, that the filler can fill, okay? I'm just gonna, you can see how when you tap it, it cracks open, right? It's no problem. We're gonna tap around it. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now we could put our filler on it and then block it straight and it'll basically, it'll fill. You'll be good, okay? Um, you can treat it from the backside with undercoating. All right, uh, that's recommended, okay? But again, you would wanna put a navel jelly on it. Same thing, what we're gonna do here is just tap it down a little bit. Not too much. So it's pushed down. Now we can actually fill this with some fiberglass and block it straight. Okay, now if you look underneath, okay, you can grind all that down and put some undercoating on it. Okay, I would grind all this down. Again, it depends on the quality of work you're gonna be doing. We're not gonna be doing a crazy quality. We just wanna put a nice outer sealed paint job on the outside of this thing. Um, when we're done, we could give this whole underneath an undercoating. Okay, I don't, I don't actually think I'm gonna go that far, but I'll probably show you a section where we just do undercoating. That's pretty much it. Now we can fill it uh, with body filler. Again, if you wanna learn how to sheet metal uh, and spot weld, we have videos in VIP that actually show you sheet metal patches over uh, holes like this. All right, so the rule of thumb when doing any type of body filler is you're gonna put about six to eight drops of hardener uh, per golf ball size of body filler or the kitty hair that we're doing uh, right over here. Any more, you're just gonna have to work faster, okay? So you could put 12 to 15 drops if you want. You just, it, you know, you're just gonna have to work with it quicker, lay it on quicker, because it's just gonna dry uh, a lot faster. So it's, it's okay to put more than not enough because if you don't put enough hardener in it then you're gonna be really playing with yourself for a while uh, and sometimes if it doesn't sometimes it won't even tack up and you're just gonna have to remove it Plugged in. See what I mean by not having a good connection? So if you're not having a good connection, what you should do is just twist it. Twist it. Maybe we'll do one more.
See, and if they're in the way, just bend it out of the way. Okay. Hold pressure on it. So keep in mind, this is a quickie job. Um, if it was a sentimental build or some, a customer maybe, you know, you can easily weld a pin in between the pins and pull more, you know, get more metal out so you got less filler on the overall job, you know, but uh, it's all good because we filled it, came out great. Um, keep watching and uh, we'll get to the uh, putty process very soon. Okay, you hold it too long, you're gonna burn a hole. Not enough, when you pull it'll snap right off. After you're done, you give it a quick twist to release. Okay, it comes out really quick like that. So you always wanna hold pressure. So you put it in, you lock it. Once you lock it, you keep pressure on this arm, pulling out, so it doesn't slip out, okay? And then you pull. And then you twist, out. Cut these off, grind it, fill it, it's already grinded. We already have 80 grit around here. Coat a putty, shape it with 80 grit, and you're done. That simple, and then prime it. You bend them toward the side like that so you can get to it, okay? You get to it like that, and you just twist. See, this right here feels a little high, okay? You hold the metal so it doesn't flex. Because if you just do it like that, no good. You want to hold the metal. Give it a little bit of tension on there, okay? Don't tap too much. You feel it. Feel with your hand. I know the dimple is right here. Push. Feels good. Okay, simple. So if you're working in an area where it's super flexible, because we really have nothing, there's probably one bolt over here holding this inner fender in, and it's super flexible like this, right? You wanna make sure you hold it, have somebody help you, and then you pull it out. Okay, so we pretty much did our job there. Boom, bend it out of the way, get your dike, Twist, it's out, hit that with your grinder, body fill it, shape it, done, 80 grit. Start from the bottom to up or top to bottom, whatever you want to do. And you don't want to overdo it, you do a little at a time to strengthen the metal. Here's a controversial topic. I get a lot of people telling me, oh, Tony, don't mix on cardboard, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, I have never had any problems mixing body filler on cardboard. Now, it's not my first choice. It's my choice now because I don't have my glass uh, mixing, mixing table with me. I've never had any issues at all in my life mixing body filler and carbon. You're gonna hear a lot of people on YouTube saying, oh, you gotta get the ink, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever. Um, when getting started here, you wanna make sure you mix your body filler, even though it looks good and even though you don't have a, a light glaze on the top, 
Okay, this looks really good. Still, you want to mix it. Bit from the edge. Another thing is, you, with your spreader, you want to make sure there's no like plastic fibers hanging out or chips or nicks in it. What I like to do is I'll use like my, my work pants or jeans or whatever, and I'll, I'll go like this. You can see some of the plastic come off on my pants there, but it really smoothens out. So when you lay, you don't have any markings or streaks. Supposed to blow it off, but 